Hi, Leticia. Thank you very much for he being here with us at the very first mission of the Tourist Festival. I hope you enjoy it so far. So tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Um, and it's exciting to come to Lisbon all the way from Mexico, where I get to work with incredible women entrepreneurs around the country. And we provide them with business development services so that they can become successful entrepreneurs as well. So you, the name of your project is CREA. Can you tell us a bit more about it? So, Crea means believe and it means create. And we believe that we can create uh, thriving women-led businesses. And we do that through business training and business consulting. And we have a network of entrepreneurs where we help women connect with other women, find role models, find mentors, and have access to the information and the resources they need to become successful entrepreneurs. Can you give us some examples of the best entrepreneurs you have in your society? Of course, we've worked, for example, with a woman called Vita that has a business called Delicia Teresana, and she has um, four employees now. She's exporting her products to California and to New York, and she makes uh, food products. She makes chocolate, she makes pipián, pinole, which are traditional Mexican spices and sweet drinks, and it's been incredible to see her transformation and to see her evolve from a semi-informal and small micro-enterprise to a thriving business that now can get access to credit, that's now formal, that has access to online commerce, to clients all over the world, so it's very exciting. What kind of impact do you think that your activity has on society? I think it's essential to provide the opportunity for these women to become successful business owners, essentially because these women own a third of the businesses in Mexico, there's about 2.4 million businesses in the country, and they're generating 70% of jobs. So if we can help them become successful and kind of go past that threshold of one or two years of survival and turn them into small and growing businesses that can provide employment and income opportunities, we can really transform the economic development for the country. How do you empower people? How do you empower women entrepreneurs with tools or with inspiration, with mentors? I think it's a combination of several factors. First, it's striking that about 99% of the women we start working with don't identify themselves as entrepreneurs. So first, it's a change in mindset, it's helping them understand that they are entrepreneurs, that they need to shift their vision from a short-term survival mode to a medium-term scale mode, and then it's providing them with the skills and the tools they need to be able to do that themselves and to be able to access new markets, and also connect them with the resources, with the people, and the information they need to do that. And how did you personally feel empowered to become an entrepreneur? <laughs> By accident as well, I think. Um, I've learned with them how to be an entrepreneur. Uh, it's, it was the first thing, any type of contact I had with entrepreneurship. I had access to fellowships. Echoing Green was the first uh, organization that trusted in the work that we were doing. And they called us like social entrepreneurs. And I was like, oh, what's that? Um, and I had no idea what it entailed. The learning curve was very steep. But I think it's a combination of perseverance, patience, a lot of patience and then resourcefulness and having incredible family and friends who support you and kind of push you and every day you come back home and you're like, this was incredible but the, and this was terrible. And also I think not losing sight of the small victories. I think sometimes we get so immersed that we're thinking so big and we're not still getting there because we're small. So looking back and noticing those little victories makes it very fun. Can you describe your daily routine? Um, it changes daily, but <laughs> it's exciting. I, um, I get to work with these incredible women. I have a large team that's now fast growing. So it's very exciting also to discover new talent, to um, inspire young people to become part of a startup essentially, and to take the risk, but also to be passionate about the mission, to push every day so that we can help more and more women and work with more and more women. and. I now also divide up my time with two other startups that I have, so it becomes a little schizophrenic. So it's like two hours in the morning, at six in the morning for one, then the full day for Crean, and the night for the other one, which makes it interesting. What are your next exploration plans? Um, we're starting a partnership with the Mexican government, which means that we're doubling our staff from about 24 to 52. We're multiplying our budget by eight, and we're tripling the amount of women women we're serving. And the idea is that in the next five years, we'll have national coverage and we'll have worked with tens of thousands of entrepreneurs. So I think it's an exciting challenge. And with high growth come high responsibilities and <laughs> higher and bigger problems. So it'll be interesting to learn about those. 
Thank you very much for this interview and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of the work. <laughs>